Hi, I'm Nana and welcome to Team 5 Minutes Real Talk. And today, we're talking about is it all in your head? And joining me, we have Fareed, who is Kenya's top male radio presenter and also TV producer. Welcome to the show. And we have Richard, who heads up the Nairobi CBD as a psychiatrist counselor for Amani Counseling Center. Welcome, both of you. Thank and you. Richard, yes. is it all in your head? Oh, yes. It's all in our head, okay? It's all in our head. And I want to take it from, you know, a very specific perspective um, where I want to borrow from, you know, some of the theorists in, you know, psychology, Albert Ellis, who talks about our cognitive behavioral theory, that our, our behavior, our thoughts, our feelings are actually influenced by the way we interpret, the way we think about our situation, the way we look at environment, okay? And I really want to agree with this gentleman because truly, today I'll feel either sad or happy because of a choice that I make. Um, many a times people will tell you that, you know, it's me who makes you happy. It's me who makes you sad. Or he's the one who has made me sad or happy. But I think happiness or sadness, anger or happiness is a choice. And it's all about in our heads. It's all about in our mind, okay? Um, it explains why, I mean, subjected to common situations or similar situations, other people will emerge from those situations better than others. Because then of how they choose to look at those situations. So our behavior, our feelings, our thoughts, it's all about you now. No, exactly. And also Fareed, <laughs> thank you for joining us here again. You know, and one of the key things is what we don't speak about is women, feelings, all the time, but men don't. And even with yourself, you've now emerged as a, you know, a great advocate for men and mental health. How did that happen? How did that come about? You know, it, it was almost by accident, to be honest with you, Nana. I, 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 this, I thought you were going to ask me, is it all in your head? And I was going to say, well, it used to be all in my head as well, because I, I lived like that for 43, 44 years of, of co con consistently stunting my progression by overthinking, uh, you know, sort of surrendering to anxiety, surrendering to paranoia. Uh, and that was, you know, hinged around substance abuse issues, as many people know, and it's, it's on the, in the public domain that I was in rehab a couple of years ago. Um, and in rehab, they sort of unpack who you are. And it's, it's not just a place where you sit for 35 days without access to drugs and alcohol. You that know, is. there's a lot of work that goes into finding where the problems arise from. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of childhood trauma, uh, which was unpacked, and that caused me to, to fall into areas of depression, anxiety, paranoia, um, sort of borderline bipolarism, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and as time goes on, you, you, you can go one of two ways. You can go, as Richard was saying, and find ways to cope, uh, you know, healthy ways to cope uh, by getting help and advice and, and counseling. Or you can go the, with the way I went, which was, you know, in a, you know, uh, drugs uh, and, and, and bottoms of bottles of alcohol. Uh, and, you know, over the years, you, you, you start to realize that you're not just destroying your body, you're destroying your mind as well. When I came back from rehab, I started talking on panels about alcohol and substance abuse, but it kind of just morphed into a lot of panels on, on mental health. And then really with men, uh, my radio personality would not, you know, give the indication that I'm someone who's, you know, soft and has feelings and emotions. I'm quite, you know, brash on air. Uh, so people really related to that as well, that you can, you can, you can be who you are, mm -hmm. but you can also be uh, who you're supposed to be as well. And then it became sort of this uh, advocate on mental health. So but when I say by accident, I really mean that. But it's something that I realize now is something that I can really, with my platform, you know, grow and help a lot of people to also um, reach their full potential. No, exactly. And also, as you, you know, both of you are saying, you know, um, and also, again, being an addict, recovering alcoholic for 21 years, 22 years now. But again, they are very similar, isn't it? It's, it's they all, they do come together. Because again, if you're an addict, like you said, we have baggage. We have, we have things as well. Um, what would you say, Richard, are the key signs? Now, again, obviously, what should people look out for? And I want to generalize, it's not just for men, it's not just for women, but what are the, the key signs that um, might make you want to maybe look more into that and see, am I suffering from it? Because again, sometimes you could be having a bad day, but when it continues going on for a week or something like that, what are the things to stay away from? Is it stress, if it, whatever, those type of things. But what would be some key Right. Um, things to look into. Um, it's not very easy to tell whether you're struggling with mental health. And perhaps it explains why not so many people are coming out to, to reach for help until it is so mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and yet our mental health is key, is everything. Mm -hmm. But 
anytime I talk about the subject mental health, even before I delve into the symptoms or rather the signs, um, I always want to remind those who listen to me that how come we take care of our physical being, um, our social being, and yet we ignore our mental being? Because then, um, how do we define mental health? According to World Health Organization, state of complete physical, social, and mental well-being. But today I'll feel my, you know, I have a toe that is paining and I really rush to the doctor or get something and, you know, um, deal with it. But I don't observe, I'm not so keen to understand or rather to realize that I also need that, you know, mental health support to function normally as a person. So what are some of these signs to look for? Um, insomnia, okay? Insomnia, in, okay, of course, the lack of sleep. Um, ideally, when you're supposed to go to bed, you're supposed to spend a few minutes than you're supposed to be. And you go know, out, yeah. 15, 20 minutes. You're getting to bed at 9, it's midnight, you're still turning and taking positions and, and you know, wondering what is happening, trying to get other stuff to drink. So that will be an indication. But as well, if you oversleep, okay, that will also be an indication that you're struggling, that you could be struggling with your mental health. If you lose appetite, or better still, eat so much. I mean, this is something that is not within your normal function day to day. Okay, so you lack appetite. And in most cases, by the way, there are other people, because then we are different personalities, and we respond to mental health challenge differently. And that is why I'm saying there are those who sleep too much, there are those who lack sleep. Um, there are those who eat too much, there are those who not eat at all. But the other thing is social withdrawal. All of a sudden, you withdraw from, from people, you withdraw from things that you like doing. That could be an indication. And especially when we are diagnosing depression, social withdrawal is a key symptom. Um, allow me to also mention that these symptoms I'm talking about, or signs I'm talking about, have to be consistent for a period of time. Like you say, it's not just a day that you're having a bad day and there you are and you're thinking, okay, it's a struggle. So a psychologist view or analysis or diagnosis of a mental health challenge will tell you that if you experience this symptom for 14 days plus, then that should be a concern. So social withdrawal, um, which is very, very, you know, um, key. When you become so irritable over issues that, you know, in the past were not, you know, uh, making there, irritable. exactly, yes, okay. yeah. That also Short will fuse. Be, yeah, that also will be a, a key indication that uh, perhaps you could be a candidate uh, for mental health. And I like to what somebody said uh, sometimes, but in fact, it's our CS, Mutai Kago, and say that all of us are candidates for mental health. Mm -hmm. All of us, including myself, yeah. are candidates for mental health. It's only that then we don't realize or we don't take key interest to realize that we are actually candidates for mental health. For mental health. Exactly. When you experience anger that is not explained, when you're experiencing fatigue that is not explained, because then that will actually tell you that you have what you call mental exhaustion. Mental exhaustion, of course, will translate into physical exhaustion, which also will be, a, you know, a key sign that uh, you are uh, struggling with uh, mental health. With when you lose interest on things that ideally you liked to, to do, okay, um, I'm a sports person, I like watching football, by the way, myself, I mm -hmm. like watching football. Perhaps I won't say my team for now, people will, you know, make fun of me. But <laughs> if, <laughs> he's an Arsenal fan. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just close at some point. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I lose interest. Yeah. I lose interest. And I think also a key thing that you mentioned was, you know, yeah. everybody's a candidate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing I think that's very important is that that's one thing I really did not even realize mm -hmm. how much it does actually hit home. Mm -hmm. And actually, we even went out mm -hmm. and had a, a bit of a session outside and saw, mm -hmm. you know, exactly the different faces or the different mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who actually are, are behind that. I mean, again, it's something that, you know, like I said, it's something that we don't even are able to realize that it's, it's at our own doorstep. So again, with yourself, you know, you've got your platform, you've got your um, advocacy for, me, for the men. What would you say? What would you, that's in that space? Yeah, I mean, I, I think just before that, I just a couple of things that Richard mentioned previously about the anger and the fatigue. And yeah. the, so I'm one of those people that die, if, if, if I, when I was suffering, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that described pretty much the two or three years leading up to me going to, to, to rehab. And actually for me, when I was in rehab, I realized my issues were not actually as much the substance abuse. And, and funnily enough, 
Stopping the abuse of substances was the easiest part of recovery. The hardest part was changing behavior. Exactly. Uh, and, and character defects and, and the, scenes, the anger the and work, exactly. Foundation. Um, you know, I, I would say to anyone uh, suffering from any man or any, any actually anyone who's suffering from mental health, you know, I think the, the key is um, there are free platforms out there. There are many free platforms uh, that are, you know, sort of mobile based platforms. Not everyone can afford counseling. You know better than anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's expensive. Uh, and if you don't have the money, you know, you should not feel like you're left behind, you're but get, get the help you can and recognize the signs if they're there as well. Uh, you, you mentioned something very interesting as well, uh, Richard, and that was that, um, you know, the social withdrawal. I, I did a lot of that. So when I came back from treatment and I was really working on my mental health, I almost went overboard trying to be social because I was so afraid of falling Being back alone, into yeah. this, uh, this, yeah, this reclusive sort of situation that, that was a sign of when I started using and drinking alone mm -hmm. because I, I was depressed, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I found the difference between solitude and loneliness. Now being alone is a very different thing for me and it's a very enjoyable thing. Uh, and when you, when, you get to, when you can kind of break that and you get to that point is when you realize that you're actually recovering. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're kind of helping yourself to fix those problems. But I would tell anyone that, that, that does have these signs or if you see signs in a family member or a friend, you know, it's, it's not taboo anymore. It's not, uh, it's not wrong to say, listen, I think you need some help. Some people will be res resistant, obviously. If it was my dad, for example, I always yeah. think about my dad, I'm sure, <laughs> for, for you guys as well. Yeah. You could never have this conversation. I like, never tell my dad, I think you need to go to rehab. Yeah, I'm depressed. <laughs> you, know, you might, like, you might be a little bit depressed. Yeah. It, you know? I remember as a kid telling my, my dad, I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> sad or low, or low, and he would say, well, go and get some fresh air, you know, yeah. or <laughs> go and play some sports, or just snap out of it, you know, not realizing mm -hmm. that there was a lot riding on my shoulders as a kid, and that caused a lot of problems as I, as I got older. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, also even just from, you know, listening to the stories and what we're talking about and, you know, spending a day, I also, you know, that, that thing of when I was drinking, when I was deep in it, um, you know, it's, it's that roller coaster of a ride. And looking back now, and not even looking back then, I mean, it, when I was going through the program, they are telling you that, you know, you, you are going to still suffer some. If somebody tells you that they've never suffered any kind of mental, you know, um, uh, issue or, or, or state of mind or anything like that, run from them because unfortunately they're still they're still in their rose tinted face. It's like those know? couples that always say, yeah. we're so happily we're so married, happy together, everything's you know? perfect. You they, know get, they get into the yeah, car and yeah, right. shouting and you're like, your yeah, mic yeah, is still yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You know, all of that type of stuff. So I mean, even with that, I, there are times when, you know, I do remember, you know, putting on music, man in the mirror, <laughs> plastered out of my mind and, and singing. And it, it is that, um, that solitude state, it's that, and like you said, you know, now I'm okay being by myself, mm. but then I would be by myself because I was upset, I was mm. angry, mm. Um, I didn't like where I was mm -hmm. um, in terms of that mind mindset, and even in that position, nobody wants to be, you mm. know, getting up in the morning, drinking your whole day, and you know what you're doing is not right, but it's just a very vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. Then again, depression kicks in. You know, you don't want to get out of bed. I mean, I'm just thankful that I was able to go through the program now because it would be a very different situation with my kids. You know, you see it in the movies or you see it with friends where you've got parents who are just in bed or in a gown. The little kid is coming in like, you know, get up, da da da, all of that. And just thankful at my point in time where I was, I didn't have that. But I do have to say I did go through one of, you know, that, that particular stage as well. And that's something that we need to really look at because unfortunately, if it is, goes unnoticed, we have people in the society who are not strong. And of course, they feel that their only end game, and I think it's really important to talk about, is, is suicide. You know, it, it comes hand in hand. Um, you know, when, when you can slip so far into it, um, suicide is on the rise. It is something that we also need to look at. We also do need to, you know, speak about. And I know free, that's one of the things you also do on your platforms. You know, you're, I'm guessing the reason why you're doing this is preventative. Absolutely. So you don't get to that stage. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Um, with I mean, that it's, and it's, stuff. It, but also, I think that you, you, at any stage in someone's life, you realize what, there's a bigger calling for you as well, you know? And I think for me, that's a big part of, of the next stage of my life as well, is if I can help as many people as I can, because I do have the, the, the output, I do have the platform, then I would. And, and then you rightfully said suicide. Uh, you know, we, we're in the business of media, so we're reading about it all the time. I'm not sure it's gone up. I think the conversation uh, is, is really prevalent now. So the suicide, everyone, you know, people exactly. are talking about it. And it's, you know, in a way, it's a good thing. 
because suicide was swept under the the rug, rug for, yeah. for many Spoken years. About, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, but now yeah. it's it's coming out. So so I think that in itself is preventative. We will be right back after the break, and when we do come back, we'll be talking about finding that right space, that right head space. And welcome back. And before the break, we were talking about mental illness and finding the right state. Now, Richard, when we were talking about that, how are ways, and again also with Farid, how are the ways we can now do the daily maintenance? Um, uh, you know, um, just before that, um, I was just trying to also look at what makes people not be able to come out and be supported. You know, um, we're talking about suicide, we're talking about depression. The support system you know, the that support, you have. Anxiety, stress and all that. I think one of the reasons why people are not coming out very strongly to get this support is stigma. Yeah, okay? very much. Being stigmatized, being labeled. People are, you know, um, have the perspective, have the notion that if you are struggling with your mental health, then perhaps there's something wrong with you, either morally, spiritually, or there's just something that is happening in your life that is not right. And so people tend to keep up. In fact, I was talking to my colleague the other day, and I was telling them, by the way, even now, it, it's so difficult for people to come into our gate because then uh, somebody just leaves where they're living to come for help, but they get to a money gate, they pass. Because then what would people see? It's, it's, it's almost like an admission say? of, you know? you know, I'm a mess, I yeah. have to go through this gate. And once you, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I mean, but no, seriously, and once you yeah. enter, yeah. you know, you've sort of said, okay, you've, you've resigned now to the fact that you need help. Yeah, let go. You, you talk about stigma now, I mean, as as two men in this room now, mm -hmm. stigma on mental health mm -hmm. across bro both genders is mm -hmm. is bad yeah. enough. But mm -hmm. for men, for men, it's, it's, uh, it's extreme. We're not supposed to have feelings, yes. you know. And exactly. I, I saw this great meme on Instagram because yeah. we're all watching. Uh, mm -hmm. We're all be on Instagram now because mm -hmm. of of COVID. You know what yeah. I mean? Everyone's you know looking at social media, and mm -hmm. it was uh, what what I see from my dad. It's like I'll pay for it. I'll pick you up uh, mm -hmm. from school. I'll do this. I'll do that. What my dad's feeling? I don't have any money. Uh, mm. I'm worried about my job. Um, mm. You know, every time I'm in the car, I'm worried about having an accident with my kids. So, you know, this is what the out outside of dad this is, but inside, this, you yeah. know, reality you know, versus we're, we're human true. beings. We have feelings. We're breakable, and and, yeah, yeah. and the, yeah. the quicker we admit it, you know, very, better than anyone. Very true. Uh, the quicker we admit it, the the the, the or the easier we, we are find to admit it, the better it is for yeah, us. Very true. Very you know, and I think also yeah. even with that, it's more of a thing of you know. Again, I'm not obviously talking from a male perspective, but just in general, as you're saying, you know, it's it's that finding that help, saying that yes, I've got this problem, and again, I want to go and get help and believe it. I mean, you're living proof, you know, as a male, yeah. you've gone in, you've yeah. gotten the help. Yeah. And um, believe me, once you actually get through those gates, mm -hmm. you are better off. It may not mm -hmm. seem it. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes you just have to really not care what people think. Exactly. You know, I got into a very vicious cycle of not wanting yeah. to go to rehab, not wanting to do whatever, pretending that I've got everything, all my, my ducks in a row and all of that, to a point where I didn't, you know, and I just got to a point where I just said, you know what, I've got two options. Either I'm going to end up dead, or I'm going to have to stop caring what people think and go take care of number one, which is myself. What do they, what do they say? Very Jails, true. institutions, or yeah. death, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that's three a sort options. Of, yeah. it's, it's recovery, it's jail, Institution or, or death. death. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it begins with you, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy to note that, you know, the trends that we are witnessing, even at Amani, is that now males are now taking up, okay. you know, uh, counseling as a way of an intervention to what is happening. And especially um, th even th during this period of mm. the pandemic, uh, we are seeing more men coming because of course there are relationship issues, financial pressures. And somebody just thinks, yes, it is right. It is right to seek counseling. It is not wrong. You know, even, even if the society, even the culture, you know, tends to actually, you know, hold us back as men, that we are not supposed, a man is supposed to be strong. A man is not supposed to cry. A man is not supposed to share their problems. I think I want to urge people that it is okay to seek help. Yes. It is okay to yes. seek help. Um, it is one of the very sure ways to actually deal with, you know, your underlining issues, what is happening to you. Um, that support system is also another way you can actually be able to get support because then without that support system, without this therapist who will just tell you and let you know that, you know, one of the things that we do in therapy is to help you identify your blind spot. Okay? Because well, sometimes when we go through an issue, we look at it from one perspective. And that one perspective may not change for quite a period of time. So you'll always see, just like in addiction, unless you contemplate, you know, the, what we call pre-contemplation, you know, stages of changes. 
pre-contemplation where you're thinking, no, it's not me who's, who's having the problem. It's the other people. In fact, it's not me. Yeah, it's, you know? and that's, that's so the, the game that your mind plays with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not the problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the problem. I, you I have been say, there, done I'm that. I'm not the problem. I used to <laughs> say every, yeah, every you know. broken relationship, I'd be like, well, that person's messed up. Until you find yourself alone. <laughs> exactly. Until you find yourself alone, I wonder, you're like, hold on a second. Exactly. Like, maybe may, it is maybe it's, it, Is it possible it could be me? Yeah. You know what I mean? No, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And unless you get to that position where you start to see... I always tell my clients, and one of the things that I help my clients to achieve is to see themselves in that problem. When you see yourself in that problem, then the change process begins. The healing process begins. But unless you are in a denial state where you say, no, 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 it's not me, it's the other person, it's the world, it's not me. I mean, I mean when you hear somebody say the world is unfair, okay, let's use that statement. The world is unfair, okay? Is it a correct statement? I think it is the perspective, it is the view of this person towards the world that it's making him or her look at the world as being unfair. unfair. Otherwise, other people are rejoicing. It is the same world. Exactly. This is, this is victim mentality, right? Yeah. Everything, but I mean, everything is being done to you. Exactly. You so know. it starts with you. I mean, any change process. For you to find yourself in that space, safe space that we're talking about, it starts with you. Acknowledging, realizing that it only takes me to actually see a difference out of all these situations. So definitely, and I also think, you know, at the same time, uh, even from a male perspective, you know, one of the things that I hear people saying, and again, you know, to, to get people to open up, and especially on a, on a section where men don't really want to talk about it, I mean, but you see a lot of men going to the gym. They go to the gym because they want to better themselves on the outside, they want to better themselves there. So what actually is the difference? You know, your, your body's not fixed, and you're trying to fix your body, mm -hmm. so again, you're, mental state may not be fixed and um, you're wanting to go get help for that, you know? So if you can work on your body, why else not work on what? everything, yes, exactly. on everything else? And exactly. that's one of the things that I say, exactly. you know, it's um, every day should be a learning, a learning process for that. But again, you know, I think um, uh, definitely in terms of, but now in the center, you mentioned you've got a lot more male on the rise or just people coming up on the rise. But again, what about the youth? I think that's another t another section that we also need to, you know, very quickly touch base on. Um, again, it's the biggest demographic in Kenya. Um, it's, it's the biggest, you know, entity that we have here. But again, how how are the numbers with the youth and mental health? I think the numbers with the youth are still low because then okay. um, these are people who do not see this the need um, one because of their perspective of where they are. Okay, so this, this category of people have, you know, um, sometimes, you know, unfairly to use the term, egocentric perspective, that it's about me. They feel big, special. I mean, they feel it's the right thing to do. It's right to get into drugs. Um, it's mm. right to bet, for example. <laughs> when you talk about betting, it is right, because then these are people who want to get money very fast. Um, it's right to actually be into pornography, you know. Uh, other of my friends are into it, so but why not? But are they not, not later on then your okay. biggest clients <laughs> as they grow up? Yeah, I mean, they will definitely I think be. Oh. All of us in our yeah. 20s and, yeah, we and late party, teens we were yeah. invincible. Yeah. Now they say FOMO, right? If you weren't yeah, doing yeah, it, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. you felt yeah, like, yeah. you know, if, wait, these guys are smoking weed, yeah, I should yeah, be smoking yeah, yeah. weed. Yes. These guys are doing cocaine, yeah. I should be yeah. doing drugs, yeah. drinking. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, that, but I, I think the, the issue that you have now, Richard, and this is from my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong. The access yeah. is much easier. Like yeah. to get to get hold of pornography in my twenties, man, you had to go like break into my dad's chest that was next to the bed. You know what I mean? Where the Playboys exactly. were. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, if you have a smartphone, you have access to pornography, yeah. and, and, and drugs, and alcohol as well. Eight, seven years, these children are accessing these, you know, tablets and yeah, smartphones. So and I think that the issue is more no. access now. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, you've got kids as young as 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 seven, eight, nine years old looking at pornography, right? That's crazy when yeah. you think about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could imagine what the next 20 years will bring if, 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 if this, this is, is not, is you know. Yeah. And this is something interesting with this category of people is that unless the parents or the caregivers initiate the process to actually bring them for help, they will not come. They won't come. Yeah. In fact, for them... Interventions. Yes, for them, <laughs> for, for them doing that makes them feel more important in the yeah. society. Mm -hmm. So why would I... Or want? belonging. But, but you yeah. know, you, you talk about... Mm -hmm. Sorry, just to go back to you talking about the, the shame of walking into a treatment or a yeah. rehabilitation <laughs> center or an AA meeting or an NA meeting yeah, yeah, yeah. or a counselor or a psychiatrist's office. Yeah, yeah. I have met young guys in AA and NA programs here 
who have, when I've talked to them, you know, 17, 18 mm. years old, and I would go up and say, this is, I'm, this is great that you're here this young, because yeah. it took me 40 plus years to get to, yeah. to, get to this room. Uh, your parents must be so proud. And they will actually turn around and say, my, I can't tell my parents I'm here because some of their friends go here. This is the stigma you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. This is the embarrassment yeah. and the shame that, that, that can stop you from recovery, can stop you from exactly. sorting out yeah. your mental health issues as well. Yeah. But also family status. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes, I mean, what will people say about my child when they yeah. hear that my child is in a therapy room? Yeah. Okay. So then with, with that notion, you actually also tend to, you know, uh, create boundaries around these children and actually stop them from seeking this very important intervention. But I think, yes, it's important as well uh, as mental health practitioners to be able to, to reach out. Um, but of course, I read you're doing that and of course you continue doing that. It's, it's very important to be able to reach out. Uh, because then um, I always like to say it's better to prevent than to cure when it comes to mental health. And of course, any other health issues, prevent, prevention is better than cure. So reaching out to them, being, I mean, psychoeducating them, giving them more information about the dangers of the behaviors that they're involving in at this particular moment will help them save a future. Otherwise, if we leave them like this, then we can only imagine the future ahead of us. Definitely. And then Farid as well, just to wrap up, I mean, you're now advocate for men, mental health. What's next? I mean, is there <laughs> bigger plans on, on doing like a round table talk uh, or? There's, there's, a, there's a couple of a couple of things in there. Was, I was I was also chatting to Richard before There's uh, online addiction counseling courses you can yeah. take, which would be something I would like to to look into and then possibly take a course and help addicts uh, because, you know, with, with helping addiction, you're also helping in the mental health realm course, as well. Partnering with uh, facilities like Amani, yeah. who I've, mm -hmm. I have actually been speaking to uh, regarding going in and doing some talks for, for, the, for the young guys that are there as well, or not just young guys, but for anyone who's there. And also creating uh, an alternative, you know, you, you and I know the step work quite well, yeah. but creating an alternative, because a lot of people don't buy into that, uh, the, the, the 12, I personally do, I'm an advocate for no, 12 steps, for but, 12 step, but yeah. there are people that, that would like to have a different way of, of finding a, a recovery. And, and I talk about recovery a lot, and I know this is about headspace, but I do not separate the two, the two. Yeah, in yeah. any way. Uh, the you reason can't. that I fell the way I fell was based on my mental health and the maintenance that I have to do on a daily basis is not necessarily recovery related maintenance. Actually, it's actually maintenance for my mental state. So it's things like giving gratitude. Uh, it's things like uh, ensuring that if I do uh, um, exempl exemplify some character defects throughout the day, noting them down, I used to have a very bad temper. Um, I used to, uh, my respect for people wasn't you know, like I would talk down a lot. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's, yeah. And that, also ego. Yeah, yeah but that's yeah, that's yeah. not addiction. That's that's innately who you that's are. That's exactly. Right? Yes. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, there are certain things. So you know, recovery, as I said earlier, from substances is an easy part. Changing the defects of character, which is the mental health part, is something that you have to work at on a daily basis, non-stop, yeah. and remind yourself that if you if you want to if you want to get to there. There's only one path to get to there, and this, these are the things you have to do every day to get there. And it's not easy. It's exactly. not easy, but but it's something I do. And at the end of the day, you feel very satisfied and very much, uh, yeah, very satisfied at the end of the day. No, definitely. Yeah. And thank you for that. And thank you both of you. And Richard, yes, if uh, you could just look over there, and I want to just very briefly, just to this camera right over here, but very briefly, um, there are going to be a lot of people here today watching this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you could please let us know if somebody has seen this, they can relate to this, they need to get help, one sentence or less. How can they do that? Where are you located? Where is the center located? And also again, like as we're saying, as much as we're having these discussions here, somebody watching this right now is going to want to pick up the phone because they're in the minutes, they're in, in, in the space. So how is that possible? All right, please? thank you so much. And of course, like we have discussed, mental health is key, is everything. Let's keep uh, taking care of our mental health. And so for those that will actually require mental health support, we are along Bagadi Road, um, just opposite Jonathan Klog, uh, you know, Academy. Uh, that's where our head office is. But we're also located in town along Tomboya Street. There's a building called Mwalimu National Sako. Uh, you find us there at 8th floor. And uh, for those that we want to call, uh, our number is 0721-416-077. I want to urge, I want to encourage all of us. And like I said, we are all candidates for mental health. And therefore, let's prioritize taking care of our mental health. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Fareed, for sharing. I know it's, um, it, it takes a lot, so thank you for that, your personal you. stories. And Richard, thank you for coming in and giving us that, you know, clinical 
um, advice and, and oversight on that. And you've been watching Team 5 Minutes Real Talk and has it all been in your head? Yes, it has. But guess what? With help and support, it can be coming out of your head and you can be moving on to a better space and a fantastic life. Until next time, I'm Nana. Take care of yourself, stay safe, and thank you for watching.